Hello everyone and welcome to the Aryan online learning classes of English. I am Ms. Anita Rawat and today in this video I will be discussing with you the third poem from your textbook Flamingo, Keeping Quiet by Pablo Neruda. Children, this is a very thoughtful poem wherein the poet has given a call for introspection for all human beings. Introspection here means keeping quiet for some time, meditating on one's thoughts and follies, and to do some real soul searching. So at the very outset, let's focus on the title, Keeping Quiet. The title, Keeping Quiet, emphasizes the necessity of quiet introspection and the need to create a feeling of mutual understanding among human beings. The title refers to some blissful moments of silence. The poet makes an appeal to the whole mankind to meditate and introspect on one's thoughts and actions with a purpose to feel the strength of humanity. He also gives a message of universal peace and tranquility. So on the whole, the title Keeping Quiet refers to introspection with a purpose to create mutual understanding among all. After having this discussion the title, let me tell you briefly about the poet Pablo Neruda. Pablo Neruda was a pen name of Chilean poet, diplomat and politician Neftali Ricardo Reyes Bosalto. He was born on 12 July 1904 and he died on 23rd September 1973. And let me tell you children that he derived his pen name from the Czech poet Jan Neruda. And you can feel the caliber of Pablo Neruda by the fact that he won the prestigious Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 1971. So far as theme of the poem is concerned, the poem focuses on the theme of the necessity of quiet introspection and the need to develop mutual understanding among all. Now children, I would like to explain the poem stanza wise. Look at the first two lines. Now we will count to twelve and we will all keep still. See children, here each and every word conveys a very deep meaning. Look at the word we. We will count to twelve. Here we refers to the mankind as a whole. And when he says count to 12, so counting to 12 refers to a session of introspection. The poet has used number 12 here as there are 12 months in a year and 12 hours on the face of the clock. And when he says that we will all keep still. So keeping still here means no activity, no chaos, no noise but only and only some blissful moments of silence. So children, you can feel that the poet wants some soul searching to be done to be at peace with ourselves and others. And he wants us to introspect for one second. Now, uh, let me quickly revise the key points of stanza 1. The poem begins on a note of introspection. And here, the poet speaks about the beauty and necessity of the stillness and silence, I mean introspection. And he recommends the same to all of us. He appeals to all of us to introspect on count of 12. And he believes that for these moments, we will forget our differences and will enter into the world of peace. Now let me switch over to the next stanza. For once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language. 
let's stop for one second and not move our arms so much for ones on the face of the earth face of the earth here refers to this universe to this world it also refers to our life span on this earth the poet asks us that in this universe we should not speak in any language look at the second line let's not speak in any language why does the poet say so the poet believes that language creates barriers and differences sometimes he feels that language breeds discrimination and it divides the people so the poet appeals to break this barrier of language and he warns all the people across the world to unite themselves now in the third line when he says that let's stop for one second he warns mankind to bring all the destructive activities to a standstill actually you'll feel children that the bitter truth is that today man has become a victim of his own doings and the unrest that we see on this earth is a result of man's thoughtless activities for so called so called progress so the poet believes that if for some time man's thoughtless activities and his mad race for progress stop then peace can prevail in the world if you look at this line not move our arms so much here children the poet has used a poetic device pun the word arms it conveys two meanings one meaning of arm is human hand and the other meaning is weapon so the poet warns us not to get engaged into any destructive activities and not to involve ourselves in any kind of war so i hope you have understood this stanza now i'll be uh, telling you briefly the key points in these lines the poet asks us not to speak in any language as language breeds a discrimination and it divides the people the poet feels that the blissful moments of silence will unite the entire human race and as i have already told you the word arms is an instance of poetic device pun in puns children you know uh, uh, you see a one word conveys two different meanings here arms stands for a body part as well as a weaponry now i will move towards next stanza the next stanza goes like this it would be an exotic moment without rush without engines we would all be together in a sudden strangeness it would be an exotic moment exotic here means something unusual something strange now see children the poet says that when all of us will fall silent when all of us we will be keeping quiet when all of us will be introspecting it will be a very strange moment why will it be strange and exotic children because this has never happened before in the history of mankind we will all feel a new kind of peace and togetherness that moment will be without rush without engines means this act of keeping quiet will put a break on the mad and frantic race for progress there will be no machines working in factories no vehicles running on the roads there will be no noise no hurry anywhere means we will feel a new harmonious bonding with others forgetting all our differences and a feeling of universal brotherhood will prevail in the world now let me briefly revise these key points from stanza 3 
द पोएट सेज इट वुड बी एन एग्जॉटिक मोमेंट इन विच द कॉस्मिक पेस ऑफ लाइफ विल कम टू अ हॉल्ट विल कम टू अ स्टैंड स्टिल एंड सो विल बी द एंजिन्स आई मीन मशीन्स ही कॉल्स इट एन एग्जॉटिक मोमेंट एज इट हैज नेवर बीन एक्सपीरियंसड अर्लियर इन दिस मोमेंट ऑफ साइलेंस द मैन काइंड विल गेट अ ब्रेक फ्रॉम द रैट रेस ऑफ मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड by referring to the world in which engines have halted the poet is indicating something he is conveying a message and what is he indicating he is indicating towards a reversal of dehumanizing aftermath means consequences of industrialization and mechanization which has made societies greedy and individuals self centric so we'll move away from this rush and hurry of the modern world that is what the poet wants to convey here now we'll move to the next stanza fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands i told you children that this poem is so simple but very meaningful here also all these words you know they are conveying some very deep meaning and this stanza particularly uh, highlight highlights the benefits of keeping quiet i mean the advantages of introspection fishermen you can see the expression uh, in the very first line fishermen are here symbolic of man's thoughtless exploitation of nature and animals i mean the exploitation of flora and fauna so in this exotic moment of silence no person will harm other living creatures for food or for livelihood now look at the next line uh, the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hand the expression hurt hand refers to the harm done by man to himself in this mad rush of the modern world man has caused incessant sufferings to himself so in this exotic moment of silence man will spare some times out of his hectic schedule to take care of himself so in these lines the poet is mainly focusing on saving the animal kingdom and saving man from his own doings now let's revise the key points here the poet has attempted to establish a harmony between the tyrants and the oppressed the fishermen here symbolize man's indiscriminate exploitation of nature and animals the moments of introspection will make man not to harm other creatures for food and livelihood the expression hurt hand symbolizes harm done by man to himself as i already told you children the poet feels that man is a victim of his own own doings and much of the unrest on the face of the earth is a result of his thoughtless activities for so called progress so in this moment of silence man will also take care of himself now the next stanza those who prepare green wars wars with gas wars with fire victory with no survivors would put on clean clothes and walk about with their brothers in the shade doing nothing green war here refers to the war against environment like deforestation pollution it means destruction of green wealth of nature in the second line the poet talks about war with gas war with fire wars with gas and fire here refers to the nuclear and chemical wars 
and you know children that the end result of these wars is complete destruction of human race we know that the result is going to be absolute annihilation of human race from this world so these people who engage themselves in such kind of wars green wars or uh, wars fought with deadly weapons they would put on clean clothes putting on clean clothes means they will purify their souls and they'll have clean conscience means there will be no ill will or hatred or feeling of revenge for others they will realize the value of universal brotherhood and peace when the poet says that they'll walk with their brothers in the shade doing nothing he feels that feeling of a universal brotherhood will prevail everywhere and there will be peace around now see the key point of this stanza green wars here referred to the calculated onslaught on nature humans have been making in the name of modernization leading to environmental degradation war with gas and fire refers to chemical and nuclear war exercising introspection will stop all the warfare which brings a victory at the cost of human lives and humanity making it meaningless naturally when nobody will uh, survive then this victory becomes meaningless in the moment of silence all will adopt a new approach towards life as a result peace and universal brotherhood will prevail in the world now the next stanza what i want should not be confused with total inactivity life is what it is about i want no truck with the death here the poet clearly says that what he wants to convey should not be confused with total inactivity he doesn't want us to become completely inactive and bring life to a standstill he only wants us to stop destructive activities due to some soul searching but he definitely wants us to continue with our positive and constructive activities for the good of the mankind he believes that life is an ongoing pro- process you see life is what it is about life is an ongoing process and it's going to remain same so he does not advocate death at all what he advocates is a life when he says i want no truck with the death he says that i do not advocate death right so here the poet is talking about life and life means you know having some positive thoughts having some positive soul searching see the key points this is stanza 6 continues uh see the rest of the lines with stanza 6 if we were not so single minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and threatening ourselves with the death you see children the word we here if we were not so single minded so we again refers to mankind at large today all the people are working endlessly with the aim of survival they are in mad race of accomplishing their task for advancement if they stop for a while and they introspect perhaps they will understand themselves better and they will also develop mutual understanding 
and it will save the earth and humanity from doom see children i would like to explain this stanza in very simple lines the poet says that we have become very self centered and because we have become self centered so we lack mutual understanding and this lack of mutual understanding leads to conflicts and conflicts lead to war and war leads to death and destruction so if we want to save ourselves from death and destruction we should go for mutual understanding and how mutual understanding will come when we'll introspect when we'll introspect we'll understand ourselves better we'll understand others better and then there'll be no conflicts no conflicts means no wars and no wars means no death and no destruction so if we want to save ourselves from death and destruction we have only one solution and that solution is introspection now the key point from stanza 6 here the poet urges his readers to not to confuse his state with total inactivity he believes that though all will be physically inactive but their minds will be at work with positivity this silence will help us churn out pearls of realization which will bear the power to change the world an absolute physical and mental stillness will be similar to death which he doesn't at all advocate the purpose of the poet is to nurture life through introspection and reflection now see some more key point from this stanza all human beings suffer from collective narrow mindedness as all their actions are linked to their survival instincts humans become so self centered that they never try to understand themselves and the world around them this sadness of lack of mutual understanding is threatening mankind with death so introspection will help us develop mutual understanding that will save all of us from the claws of death now see next stanza two lines are there perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves it to be alive here the poet says that let's learn a lesson from the earth we can learn from the earth that there is life under apparent stillness see children earth gives us a lesson of preserving and resurrecting life how i'll explain this with a very simple example you see children during winter season all the trees they shed their leaves and they look dead but as spring season comes new leaves new flowers new fruits appear on them and then you know the life comes back one more example you can see seed when we put seed under the soil so it seems that seed is dead but actually under the soil all life processes go on and then after some time that seed germinates into a plant similarly the poet says that taking a pause and doing introspection can give a new meaning to our life it will be a rebirth of our souls leading us to a better life i hope you have understood this look at the key points the earth teaches us that stillness is always succeeded by a period of rejuvenation the plants and trees that seem dead during winters actually blossoms into life on the onset of spring hence we must not shy away from keeping quiet just as mother nature has shown us our apparent stillness will be awarded with eventual growth and prosperity and it will lead us to better 
life so the lesson that we have learned from earth we should apply in our life and we should go for introspection to make our life better now the last couplet is there now i'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and i will go you remember the first two lines children where the poet says that we will all keep still we will all count to 12 we will all keep still but here in place of we he is using i it means now the poet walks out of the scene and he keeps it open to all of us to experience this moment and to give better purpose to our lives see the key points in this concluding lines the poet quietly leaves the scene after initiating a process of introspection and reflection within us now his work is over as he has conveyed his message of introspection now it is upon us to follow his dictum in order to lead a meaningful existence in which we can benefit both on an individual and a societal level now the poem is over i'm sure you must have understood it very well and now my message to you children we should always spare some time to introspect on our thoughts and follies to make our life better thank you